from your hostess with the mostess, Lauren Hines. This is I Did It My Way, the podcast that brings you into the story of leading entrepreneurs and tastemakers. DJ Mark Battle was born Mark Adams in the busy streets of Brooklyn, New York. His early attraction to the sounds of the 70s and 80s was intensified each time he passed Brooklyn's Fort Greene Park to hear the local DJs spinning. After a long summer working hard to purchase his first professional DJ set, this naturally skilled music enthusiast became an accomplished turntablist performing in hot New York City clubs by the age of 16. For 10 consecutive years, DJ Mark Battle continued to perfect his craft and became one of the most sought after DJs in one of the largest and busiest cities in the world. In 1994, DJ Mark Battle expanded his artistry to Atlanta and quickly created a buzz as one of Atlanta's hottest DJs, promoting the still-famed Tri-State Party with Wax Factor Entertainment. Together, they electrified clubs and parties all over the city with their unique and upbeat style that cleverly combined an eclectic catalog that went from hip-hop all the way to jazz with a splash of reggae and pop. Today, DJ Mark Battle owns and operates a highly celebrated and successful full-service entertainment company known as One Sound and Entertainment. This luxury brand's services also include some of the most celebrated DJs in the world, access to some of the most sought after, top of the line equipment in the industry, and exceptional music library to enliven anyone's eardrums. With one sound and entertainment, DJ Mark Battle's intense and exciting performance style has been enjoyed throughout the Americas, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Essence, Martha Stewart Weddings Magazine, and Munaluchi Brides Magazine, just to name a few, have also praised his work. Jezebel Magazine crowned him 2013, 2014, and 2015 Best of Atlanta. This music enthusiast matches his zeal with a polished professionalism that makes him a favorite DJ for all kinds of events today. DJ Mark Battle's versatile artistic flair and overwhelming love for music guarantees a memorable celebration. He is, of course, the luxury event music specialist. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining in on I Did It My Way. We're super excited to be uh, sharing, of course, the best of the best of the professionals in the events and entertainment industry with you. And uh, today is no different. Uh, we have, of course, the teacher of teachers for his area in the industry. If you are familiar with anything that's happening anywhere along the West Coast and even into the East Coast with entertainment and DJing, uh, we have the teacher of teachers for of DJs here with us today to really give some insight into building smart business that uh, actually carries beyond your generation and being able to, to go beyond what you think you might know as a certain skill set, uh, really opening your eyes into, into what really, how you can grow your business um, and expanding really your mindset of what can happen when you build a business that's stable and that goes beyond you. Uh, we're really excited about having uh, with us today, DJ Mark Battle of One Sound and Entertainment with us today. Welcome, Mark. Hey, Lauren, how are you today? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, man. Thanks for uh, sharing your wisdom with us today, sharing your energy and your awesome smile, of course, with our group. We're so excited to have you uh, in the place today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So how's life, man? What's going on where you are now? Uh, life is good. Like I said, we, we're full of blessings and really can't complain about everything because the plan is all coming together. That's and, awesome. Um, the plan may not necessarily happen as fast as you want it to happen, but it happens. As long as you mm -hmm. stick to it, it happens. It's coming together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So the plan, have you always had a plan from day one? Or how do you feel that plan came about? Okay, the, the plan the plan changes with life. You know, it, it just changes with life. Um, because originally I set myself up. I wanted to be like a DJ in clubs and everything. And, you know, and it wasn't until my best friend got married about 12 years ago that um i realized that hey weddings is you know is a different market and i think i can do this and i could do this in my way with style and class because you know they, and they just do it in my way and so i just kind of planned it out and you know it, it, it came together it came together the club culture isn't as stable as wedding industry. 
see the wedding industry, you know, like say like with deposits and everything, like I pretty much know how much money I, I'm going to make for 2017, where in the club industry, it's like somebody will contact you a week, two weeks before, and you're like kind of waiting on somebody to call you. And where right now, because I'm doing, I'm doing weddings, I'm being booked for 2018 right now. Wow. So I'm not worried about how I'm going to pay my bills next week as, as, as in the, in, with the, dealing with the clubs, you know, you worried about how you're going to pay it, your bills next week. Then also, um, as, as getting older and becoming more mature, um, the club scenes, and also, also, you know, I've I worked in strip club too. Um, I worked at the, I worked at the world famous Magic City for a year. Um, and the subculture, the subculture was something that, um, I didn't necessarily want to be around, you know, it was, you know, subculture and yeah, you know, you wanted to, I wanted to come home at a decent time. I wanted to be around good people and stuff yeah. like that. And that wasn't necessarily in that culture. So mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to change everything that was going on within my lifestyle. When did you know you were going to pursue this all the way? Was it when you got your speakers or was it um, right when you were at five or six on the mic? When was that? So, um, I don't think, I don't think we actually, I, I did it for the love and I, and I don't, I never believed that I could actually make a career out of it. It, it was mm -hmm. more of a hobby and it was something that, um, relieved stress for me because mm -hmm. I was never really a drinker. I never really did drugs, anything like that. So yeah. it was always, it was always my thing to relieve stress and, and just, so if I would have known what I know now and what I've seen other people do, you know, like I, I left, I left um, New York and went to college where I could have, because it's, okay, so there was other DJs that I was around mm -hmm. that talked their parents into investing college money mm -hmm. into them being a DJ okay. where, you know, if I would have known better, I could have got to talk somebody into it also <laughs> instead of having any student loans or anything like that. And um, yeah, I didn't know, I never realized how much, how it could become a career mm -hmm. and instead of a hobby until probably when I moved to Atlanta. When did you come down to Atlanta? In 1994. That was, that was before the, everything, before the Olympics, before right. the year really right. got hot then. Right. That was before a lot right. of the building was happening. Yeah. Right, so, so what, what was, everybody um, before that got to know each other. So everybody that you see now that's blown out the water, mm -hmm. like we all crossed paths before. So it's wow. like everybody, everybody I, I got a real funny story about Ludacris. I got some funny stories <laughs> about DJ Drama. Like, <laughs> like everybody has, has crossed paths. Yeah, that's really cool though. It's good to see when you got people coming from, from knowing from whence they've come and they stick it out and they're seeing the success of the fruits of their labor or the sweat. Yes, and the tears, yes you know? because, because, um, Persistence overcomes resistance. So, so I, I watched people persist. Now, the only thing that I'm kind of, um, I'm a little upset about myself with is because I, I, I stopped for a while because I got, I, I was depressed because a business venture that I got into didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what the hell with this? And, you know, I pawned most of my equipment, pawned most of my equipment. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to get a job and work till retirement and then that's it, you know, and, and that's when, you know, when, like I said, when I went to my best friend's wedding in New York, mm. my peers. so uh, that's the only thing that I'm a little upset is because I stopped for a while and I watched people that didn't stop that started at the same time as me and now they're like, what? One one of my boys is, is uh senior vice president of Sony Music, another one is senior vice president of MTV, another one is you know, like it's wow. just you know, yeah. it's like you watched it, you watched them slow down. I mean, I slowed down and then I watched people still move and then I'm like looking at them right now and I'm like, Oh man, you know, I should have never I never Wow. I wish I would have never stopped. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny, there's always a reason, you know, for why things happen the way they happen. And mm -hmm. some people get real comfortable at their cushy corporate position. Yeah. And, and then when the time comes for them to break free, they can't anymore because they're invested in their 401k. <laughs> yeah, they're invested in their 401k. But then what's crazy is when you start doing the math and you're yeah. like, they're like, hold up, hold up. Like, 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 I'll look at things now, like, so you telling me, like, when I was working for someone else, mm -hmm a deposit to book me now mm. it took two weeks to make that 
working for somebody else, it took me two, it took me two wow. weeks to make that. Yeah. You know, you, you yeah. start looking at the numbers and you're like, hey, yeah. you, know, yeah. this, you know, entrepreneurship might be the way to go for me. It might be the way. I think I'll figure something out, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to figure something out. Yes. You know, and, and actually, that was, that was my logic when I left my job. My logic was, well, all I got to do is I knew how much money I was making with my job. And I said, I said to myself, well, it just take, it only had to take me two weeks to get booked once. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to make my deposit. Um, you know, all, all I got to do is get booked once and make my paycheck. Like, like that's how I saw it, you know, mm -hmm. when I left my job. And yeah. then it was like, okay, all right. So now, you yeah. know, three and four, five in one day. And you're like, wow. you know, you start doing math and you're like, okay, yeah. entrepreneurship is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good uh, area you brought up, though, too, um, Mark, because a lot of people are wondering, I know you help a lot of other entrepreneurs with this, too, how to get step away from their full-time job. If they are loving their passion, particularly, I'm not sure if you could speak to, you know, when you knew it was timing for you. I know you mentioned you started booking more in one day, but uh, what's some advice you give to uh, an entertainer who is like, hey, I really want to make this my full-time thing. How do I do this? You know, we okay. could talk a little bit about it before, but. Okay, so um, it depends on where you are in your life and how you handle it. Because you, you handle it totally different if you have a job and if you don't have a job. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the way now, the way that you win even more is if you have a job. You save the money from your job and you're making money from your business. And this is your way to tell if you can maintain your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. and your life That's good. With just with, business. Your, with your business so the money that you're making from your business is you're paying your bills doing everything but not only that you're creating a nest egg you're creating a nest egg for your, your personal life and also for your business you want to buy all the products and everything that you need uh, -huh. uh before you leave your job everything is just so so what i did was i bought equipment i bought uh, i bought new equipment everything that i needed and, and, and everything that I needed mm -hmm. before I left that job. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things. And then at the same time, you're going to save, you're going to save money and then see if you can maintain. So when you really, when you get to the point where you're maintaining your lifestyle and, and you have, you have a surplus. Yeah. It's yeah. Time to go. It's time time to go. Go. Yeah. It's that's time good. To go. when, when, when you have a surplus, you have a surplus that's that's really you know coming in. You're like, okay, right. I'm in my lifestyle and this right here, and this money is going straight and, and being saved. So I'm not really missing that. Mm -hmm. okay, it's time to go. Time it's to make time. Some moves. And, and then by then, you should have enough saved in your in that stage so you can make those moves that you want to make. Yeah. And you've built up the character and the discipline and the focus to be able to do that and repeat it and, over and over. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you another thing. That, uh, pricing. Mm. Okay, so so remember what I was I was telling you about. Um, there's a difference in how you would handle it if you had a job and if you didn't have a job, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what you do is because you already have that job in place, you have something to fall back on. So what you do is you are really creating and showing people your value because you, at this point you're like you can name your price. You can tell people, hey, this is my price, and then that's what it is. Now, you could do that, but, and not to be cocky or arrogant or anything like that. Right. It's more like it, the game is different when your kids got to eat. When, yeah. when, when you, have, you have a job to fall back on, you're like, my kids are going to eat, and I'm going to maintain my value. But, um, and because you have that job, you can tell people, hey, this is my price, take it or leave it. And people want you to haggle and negotiate and you're like i don't need to do that i know my value because you have income you yeah. have income you yeah. don't have an income and this is what you're doing full yeah. time right now and you know you don't have they're like well okay okay i'll take two dollars you know i'll take two dollars <laughs> because my kids gotta eat. my yeah. kids gotta eat so um so that's what i say it's, it's a different way and how you would handle it if you had a job and if you didn't have a job but then now okay so now you develop your your value your brand and everything else and you got that nest egg and mm -hmm. now you tell people hey this is my price this is what it is yeah. and if you don't have that job to fall back on you got that nest egg you created a brand you created a value so you're like okay you're not going to pay me, but you already know somebody else will. 
Right, right. That's good stuff. I mean, that's, that goes throughout every vertical I can imagine. You know, you've got to know your value once you built up your brand. Why would you say, hey, it's 500 or or $1,000 when you know the value you bring and your equipment, you're savvy? Like, why, why, why would I do that when yeah. I know that if I blow one speaker, it costs me $300 to fix? Once you develop your plan, you don't have to do those things that you don't want to do. And you also develop the integrity of your business. Yeah. Let me, let's talk to the flip side of that, though, for a quick second, Mark. I know we have we had some questions to go through, but then you look at the person who's a novice or the person who doesn't quite have the resources or perhaps doesn't have the inventory or equipment. And then they're trying to have that higher price point that they're charging in the market that someone who is more seasoned, more savvy is charging. Can you speak a little bit to the price point of pricing yourself as a, a new person or a person who doesn't have the same resources? You cannot have dollar store products or dollar store service and expect Neiman Marcus business. Mm -hmm. Like you, you cannot do that. So the first thing that you have to develop is your product or your service. And you have to de develop a product and service that says high end or luxury. You have to develop that first. You are the product and the service. That's you, it. You are the, so that's you have to. Right, yeah. That's part of it. You have to invest in yourself. You mm -hmm. have to. You have to invest in yourself. You know, there's a lot of people that that's always uh, asking me, well, how do you get the business that you get, and how do you, um, how do you get those type of clients and everything? Because those clients know BS when they see it. Yeah. So if they if they see the quality and everything that you do and and a lot of a lot, women, okay, let me let me say, women see things that men don't see. Discernment, so, yeah, we're so, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, y'all y'all see see men, we see things differently than women, but when we're talking about a product and a service, I think women see it a little bit differently mm -hmm. than men. You know, they I and I noticed like when I first got the famous headphones women are like real attracted to them like like women are like <laughs> like they look at them and they'll, they'll first they'll look at me and they'll be like that ain't cheap like, like you know <laughs> and women see things totally different than men so we have to uh we have to play into that we have to play into the things that that women see mm -hmm. because and in my market the women women are the consumer well, you know, um, I wanted to go into a little bit of your challenge. You spoke when you went into some depression and some challenges you went into. What were some of the hardest challenges you faced when you're in business? You know, what were what do you feel was that line in the sand moment where you're like, I have to go forward? And what were some of those hardest points? Because I'm sure you had a few. But what I had, you I, I've, I've had a few. Um, I honestly, honestly, I, I found out that me and business partners don't work too well. Mm. Honestly, I, I found that out and I'll probably, probably never be in a business, a business partnership ever again. Mm. You know, I know that because I communicate differently and then I have ideas and I want to go ahead and make a move on that idea. I, I'll come up with an idea at three or four in the morning. And I want to go ahead and make a move on it right. where you got a business partner, you know, you got to call them in the morning and whatever, talk, or whatever, you know, yeah. all that stuff. And yeah. That was one of the things that I found out. And, and then when you're also dealing with money, mm -hmm. you know, money changes people, mm -hmm. you know, even mm -hmm. if you make it or you're not, you know, money changes people. Hey everyone, hope you've been enjoying this episode of I Did It My Way. I'm Lauren Hines, your hostess. And at this point, we wanted to encourage you all to let us know if you have a business or you have a project that you're pushing forward. We would love to welcome you as a sponsor for I Did It My Way. In addition, we're here in the local Georgia area, so we have other opportunities if you are interested in being able to expand your business here in Atlanta, the metro Atlanta area, or if you are local to here. Uh, we want to encourage you to reach out and find out some opportunities available through the I Did It My Way sponsorship program, as well as uh, some on-the-ground activities that we do through Atlanta Wedding and Event Professionals Network throughout the year. We have dozens of uh, opportunities for you to be able to uh, partner with us for more than simply the podcast, which of course will reach your, our, our audience, but also of course if you want more live on the ground visibility as well um, in the more high touch capacity, we're happy to be able to introduce some of those opportunities to you too. 
More so, we just love partnering with other vibrant entrepreneurs who are creating their stories every single day. And so help us along our journey and we'll help you along yours as you consider partnering with us for I Did It My Way as a sponsor and beyond. If you want to reach out to us, you can contact me, Lauren Hines. You can reach out at info, I-N-F-O, at AtlantaWEP.com. Or you can reach out to us by phone at 1-800-316-7816. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Enjoy the rest of your journey, and we hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Thanks for checking it out. Never do business with a broke person. Never do business with a broke person because they got to do whatever they got to do to eat. Because of a business partnership, I went broke. Mm. You know, I went, I went totally broke. I'm talking about, I told you I went broke and I was eating potatoes 40 different kinds of ways, bro. Mm. So um, I don't want, I don't ever want to have that feeling ever again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the depression and having to sell my equipment and stuff like that. Mm. I don't ever want to put myself in that position again. And I don't ever want to put myself in a position where I have to blame someone else. Mm. And if anything happens, it's going to be my fault. It's going to be my fault. I made a mistake. I, it's not, um, you know, um, you know, my partner forgot to pay the bill or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, my partner forgot to pay the rent. Or, yeah. or yeah. Like, no, 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 no. If anything ever happens, it's going to be my fault. So I don't want to put myself in a position to do that again. No. So um, Did you have your girls back then also at the time? No. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, it, it was just me by myself, mm -hmm. and and then probably if it wasn't if it wasn't for my sister, I probably would have starved to death. Right. Like you know, I was I was just you know just upset and and de and depressed, and my partnerships, you know, my business partnerships didn't work. Yeah, yeah. So learned a lesson. Yeah, and I hear a lot. Going, that was what year is this? Ooh, that was like four. 14 years ago. Wow. Yeah, that was like 14 years ago. So, yeah, um, a lot of lessons learned. Yeah, a lot of lessons yeah. learned. How do you feel that's made you better now? I mean, and, and you talked about going to your friend's wedding. That's when you realize I'm getting back into this. But there was a time when you said, I know I'm not going to let this happen again, but how do you feel it served you? Oh, it humbled me. It, it humbled me mm -hmm. because... <laughs> so um I opened a restaurant. So I took the money that I was DJing Magic City and all that stuff and I opened a restaurant, right? So I'm 22, 21, 22 wow. years old. Wow. Open a restaurant. We making probably about fifty thousand dollars a month, something like that. Wow. Like young, stupid. I had business partners, bought a BMW. I'm delivering pizzas in a BMW. <laughs> young, young, stupid. Like like <laughs> Just, you know, just so I know some 30 something year olds who do that though. So, and some 40 something, you're like, still, <laughs> so it was just a lesson learned. Like, it was a lesson learned how to humble myself. Yeah, wow. I just I just had to humble myself. That's all. And, um, and there's, there's a lot of other lessons that I learned along the way as far as uh, customer service, um, integrity. There's a lot of things that I learned. Um, you want your clients to not care, even though they want you to be busy because being busy, they, they assimilate being busy with being good. Yeah. You know, and, and being the best. Until so they, they can't yeah. reach you. Right. So that's what I was about. That's, what I was about. <laughs> that's exactly what I was getting at. So they want you to be busy, but yeah. they don't care about how busy you are. So you can't, you know, a, a client email you or something yeah. like that, and you can't say, um, what, what's the, um, I forgot, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this wedding in um, some island, uh, yeah. coming up, I'm, uh, what's the name of that? It's, it's some island I ain't never even heard of before. Wow. But anyway, I don't want to, <laughs> what you say? So that's exciting. That's cool. Yeah. It like, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 I'm supposed to be doing this way. Yeah. Some island yeah. I've never heard of. Huh? But they don't want to hear you was on some island somewhere and you didn't have no phone service. They don't want to hear that. No. They, they don't want to hear, yo, know, there's no Wi-Fi because I was on a plane for 20 hours yeah. and had no Wi-Fi on the plane. 
Your clients <laughs> don't want to hear that. Yeah. So those things like customer service, integrity of your business, um, I learned a lot of that. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot of that. And, and that, uh, that I apply to my business today has been working. Good stuff. I treat, I treat business the same way I want to be treated. So I treat other businesses the, like the things that I do for my clients, I would want other people to other businesses to do for me. Mm, very good. Yeah. The golden rule, right? Yeah. That's good stuff. And I'm here, like, it sounds like what I hear from you is that you learn to really fail forward. John Maxwell talks about that and learning to fail forward. Yeah. Failure is not final, you know, and you found a way to keep moving forward and let that failure serve you on or temporary setback, you know, mm-hmm. so before that comeback. So, so in terms of just establishing, um, you kind of hit on it a little bit when you were referring to, um, doing others for others what you want you them to be able to do for you if someone were serving you in business and so i kind of wanted to talk with you about becoming indispensable in the marketplace that would probably be the next big thing that we hit on before we close out um about what's going on in your life too but um how do you make yourself indispensable i think that you've done an excellent job mark like thank you just doing that because when i was planning a wedding to be quite honest i had a bride who um you know based out of new york and she said I could have Mark do my wedding, like that would just be awesome, you know. And she knew of your caliber from up there, and uh, you know. So, how did you? How do you feel like you yourself and advice to others to making themselves indispensable in their chosen field? The way to make yourself indispensable is by being yourself and doing what you do. Like, don't worry about what other people are doing and the way that other people are doing things. Yeah. Do your thing. Like, like I. Like I used to think, wedding, I used to think wedding DJ was corny. You know, I would see the I, I would see the guy with the with the half a tuxedo on and stuff uh-huh. like that. I would go to like wedding and be like, hey, this is corny. Like this is really like this is really corny. And the music right. was right. corny and everything. And I'm like, yeah, corny. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So when I seen you, like I told you, my best friend's wedding, and I was like, yo, I could do it my way. Mm. I could do it my way. And it not be corny. And what makes you indispensable is that can't nobody do what you do the way that you do it. Nobody. Can't nobody do it. Nobody. Can't yeah. nobody. They could try and copy and nobody. everything else. I got I got people all over the country, all over the United States, yeah. copying off my headphones. And I was gonna ask you that. Like how many people are wearing headphones? Oh, there's there's, there's quite a few. There's <laughs> quite a few. And and but they still can't do what I do, and people know the difference. They're yeah. like, "Oh, that, that, you're not. No, that's not you. Yeah, you know, they know the difference. So you make yourself indispensable by doing what you do. Mm-hmm. Just do what you do, and do what you do very well. And that's what makes you indispensable. And um, I can't I can't do what you do, and you can't do what I do. Right. It, it, it creates yeah. a brand. Like you yeah. you are a brand in yourself. So you just need to maintain the brand that's all that's all and and then what's what's great about it is that the more business that comes and the more money that you make you're really able to really do those things that you really wanted to do but you didn't have the resources to do the with the more resources that you get you uh what they say uh somebody said that um uh money money turns you into the person that you really are or something yeah. like that not more like, people are, yeah yeah like like you know so so the more money that you make you're like you're really doing those other things that you want to do mm-hmm. you know i always wanted to i am an entertainer i'm an entertainer before i i'm a dj but i'm an entertainer so my whole everything that i do is a part of the entertainment down to the way that i dress down to the equipment that I have, down to the way everything looks. Yeah. It's all for, all a part of the entertainment package. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. That's yeah. what makes you invisible. And I have to mention that to you because I mentioned something that you did that time when I, brought, I contacted you for that event. I know you were booked, but um, you made sure to recommend someone else. Like you... Where there was no hesitation. Like you already, knew, you have people you wanted to give back to, and I think that's a, a tenant of success. As you as you reach certain uh, milestones or markers in your in your growth and your development with success, you want to look back, not, or even look beside you, because sometimes they're right there with you, um, and be able to pull people along the way too. And so, what does that? <clears throat> how does that 
um, fulfill an area of success or achievement or money making more of who you already are for Mark Battle? Okay. Um, like I told you before, I totally believe in strategic partnerships, mm -hmm. but those strategic partnerships have to be cohesive with your brand. I believe in the integrity of my business. Yeah. So integrity is, is, is very important. So I look at that a little bit differently than anybody. Well, a, a lot of other people, because mm -hmm. some people are like, why would you set somebody up to steal business from you? I don't necessarily look at that, look at it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I look at it this way. I look at it this way. If I refer business to you, and I do something, it, it doesn't even, it doesn't really even hurt me to do it. Yeah. Uh, I put you in, I put you in place to help you provide for your family. Mm -hmm. First of all, you're never going to forget it. Yeah. That, right. I, that I put things in place for you to provide for your family. Then also it's, it's in line with integrity mm -hmm. because I want to set up things to the point where if somebody ever comes to you and says that something negative about me, you're going to look at them and tell them, yo, you're a liar. Yeah, go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I'm in this business. I want people to have a good time with or without me because everybody's not my client. Everybody's not the right fit yeah. for me. So, right. but I still, I still want you to have a great time and everything, but you know, they are not necessarily my client. And once you understand that everybody's not your yeah. client, you're not going to be chasing it like a, you know, chasing ambulances and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Because everybody's not your client. You right. know, some people yeah. just don't have a good fit. I could talk to them and already know, like, oh, y'all not going to like me. If music is not important to you, yeah. then I'm not right. your client. I mean, you're not my client. You're yeah. not my client. Yeah. It's just not a good fit. So. That's good. And that's integrity, too, showing, saying that from up front instead of just taking the money, too. Yeah, just taking you the money. The and, 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 I, and I learned my lesson from that because, you know, those situations where you just take the money, it's an awful situation. It is, because you know, like, you sense it. You're like, this is not it. It's an awful yeah. situation. Yeah. You know, they looking at you crazy. And <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, like, no, oh, no. So you don't even want to set yourself up for a situation like that. So yeah. just keep it the way that it is. So what is your anchor? What keeps you going, you know, the day to day? You know, I had someone tell me the other day, I quit daily, but guess what? I get back up and I keep going. But there's something that is within you that keeps you going, whether you have a, a saying or a mantra or like a, um, some kind of guiding philosophy or scripture or something. What is it that keeps you going, you know? Um, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthened me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. My whole story is like, like I said, like I went broke. Mm -hmm. So, and I was, and I was depressed and hurt. It, it hurt my feelings, you know, like failing in business, like really it hurts you. Like it really, it, it feel like, so, like that girl broke your heart. Like the first time my heart ever been broken, you mm -hmm. know, like that's what it felt like. Like your heart is holding your whole body up and it's just a skeleton. Mm -hmm. and you just, wow. Uh, <laughs> You know, so, um, yeah, I don't ever want to feel that again. Yeah. And, and I know that all things are possible. I, I know that all things are possible. You just got to put in the work in the wedding industry in particular. If I do, I do over 70 weddings a year. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much know who's working and who's not working. Yeah. Yeah. So don't try to fool me into <laughs> having me believe in that you're working like that, yeah. you know? So yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Be real, be yourself, build your brand. Cause yeah. like, put in that work, put, yeah. put in that work. Like yeah. just, that's it. like, it's no shortcut yeah. to it. You just got to put in work yeah. and that's it. You got to, you got to put in work and you got to go hard with it. Yeah. And, you know, and then when it gets down to it, it's your business. Mm -hmm. So whatever it takes, if I have to mop the floor or whatever, because somebody mm -hmm. spilled whatever, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it because yeah. it affects my business. It it affects the way it affects my livelihood. Yeah. So exactly. I'm gonna have to do whatever you know is a, is a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. This was uh, so good, um, Mark. Really, I mean, there's so much that came out of it. Even we met we met and talked a couple times before, but it's just every time it's just so good to to hear your heart, you know, that you give so much in every interaction with people. And so um, I wanted to know what are some things that you're doing? What are some exciting things you're working on that you can share? Um, 
because your people want to know, you know, what's next for DJ Mark Battle? What are some things you're doing right now that you're excited about? You know, um, I'm excited about my own brand of headphones that's coming out. I'm excited. Um, <laughs> really, awesome. I'm really excited. I got I got a great situation. Wow! And I'm, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about my phone app that's coming out. Now my app, I can't really go into the details of it, but when yeah. I tell you this, wow! When I tell you, <laughs> all, all, all my event industry people, wedding industry people, when, when y'all see this. that's what's up that's yeah so so when you see so i'm very excited about this i'm very excited about this and um it's a blessing to be able to do what you love it's Mm -hmm. it's a blessing because there's a lot of people that go through life with regrets and not doing things that they love and i'm lucky lucky to say that i'm not one of those people you know that i I could actually say that I've done everything that I always said that I wanted to do throughout life. Yeah. You know, this I, I'm lucky to say that I've done pretty much the things that I said that I wanted to do and made them happen. Yeah, yeah. I think that it comes with, we talked we talked a little bit about it um, before we started everything today, just how you're, you have to be willing to look crazy to somebody. And I like that water bottle. Check that out. One sound of entertainment. Oh. Um, oh. yeah yeah branding branding you gotta preach that that's very important <laughs> but that's you very know, important. be willing because you said i started out doing what i wanted to do and you know that's what we're all about i did it my way and it comes with that price that cost that early cost of being willing to n- go against the grain of what everyone's doing and to be the less popular in terms of um, you know, you're an inspiration to people at the same time, but then there's the other side. Are you sure you want to do it that way? that way for meaningful people around you? But you chose to say, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to build my brand and it may not be easy. It's going to be hard. I'm going to have to hold on to Bolivia's 413 as I go through mm-hmm. hell and building my brand, you know, and I'm going to do it. But you did it and you're doing it now. You're venturing into a whole nother area with product development. That's genius, you know? Mm-hmm. It's genius. It's perfect. And I can't wait to be, get a pair of your headsets. That is going to be awesome. Great situation. Great situation. Yeah, yeah, great situation. That's awesome, Mark. So how can people connect with you? How do you want folks to connect with you? What's next? Well, look, oh, so, so social media now has like, it almost got it to the point where I'm not going to say you don't need a website, but it almost, it's like kind of to the point where people want to see your whole body of work and they'll look at your Instagram before yeah. they look at the website. Yeah. And then they look at your Instagram and they contact you and everything through Instagram. So yeah. it's real, it's real weird like that. But I have a YouTube channel. I have a, a One Sound Entertainment YouTube channel. One Sound uh, and Entertainment YouTube channel, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Have a one Sound and Entertainment YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Then also uh, One Sound and ENT. That spell out all the words. One Sound and ENT uh, uh, and Instagram and One Sound and Entertainment dot com. Um, my website. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's a blessing to be able to do something that you love and to be able to make money doing it. So mm-hmm. I really, um, I really can't complain. Yeah. And we're going to close out, Mark, with that. But what is the piece of advice that you'd give out if you could give out one? I always, I know that's a tough one, but if you could leave with one thing that you haven't already said or to reiterate something you already said, what would that be to the people out there um, grinding it out, you know? Come up with a plan and stick to it and, and plan it all the way through and stick to it because at first, it, it may not work at first. It may not, you may not, see it working but other people are noticing that is that is working and just yeah. stick to that plan just just stick to that i'm telling you and i've watched it time and time again i've watched because what happens is when you stick to the plan there are going to be other things that come in there mm-hmm. with the plan that's mm-hmm. going to align with the plan it's just going to make it even bigger mm-hmm. yeah it's gonna make it even bigger so you still you're still doing your, your original thing. You're still sticking to the plan, but there's things that are just adding to the plan that's just making it bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. So it, find out, figure out what your plan is, think it all the way through, and stick to it. Awesome. Good stuff, Mark. Well, thank you so much for joining us, executive, no inventor, investor, business builder battle. 
I'm so excited to have had you here today. And until the next time we get together, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much for sharing the love, the wisdom. Um, and uh, if there's anything we can do at Atlanta WEP to continue to, to grow and help other people, to pull people up and to share what things you have happening, please let us know. But we were so thankful to have you with us today and we appreciate you. No problem. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you for being a part of the magic with I Did It My Way. Visit us at www.atlantawep.com. Dot Atlanta, W-E-P dot com.